Sisters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Well, hello. And greetings. We're coming to you live-ish from the red carpet here at World of Wonder headquarters. I know you look surprised, right? <laughs> the it's carpet an, looks great to it's me. It's an imaginary red carpet okay. because this has been a very special <laughs> awards week, okay? It's true. And I'm joined by Tom Campbell, our chief creative inspiration oh my at goodness. World of Wonder. Tom, what are you wearing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, a Uniqlo, head to toe. <laughs> Fenton, I would like to point out that you're wearing something very interesting. Uh, a striped shirt for no, a change. No, no, oh. I like this this band-aid thing going on in your thumb. It's very chic. Oh, what you're is drawing that? attention to my neurotic tear myself <gasps> apart. This is what I do. I pick my thumb, I tear the skin I off. I know you do that, and then yes. I eat it. But but you have a very <laughs> chic looking band-aid. It looks like it's made of bamboo. It's, this or, at, it's what or, athletes or, wear. Or or something. It's what athletes wear. It's self adhesive uh, thing, and it's good because I can like pick at that and eat that. All right. I'm sorry, we're, we're, we've gotten a little off topic so this soon. Is, so early. James St. James, darling. <laughs> this is marvelous. What are you wearing? What am I wearing? I'm Some sort of quilted <laughs> thing. Does Fenton eating his thumb anyway relate to cannibalism? I really <laughs> should go see a therapist about it. I you really should. should. It's like, you know, because uh, otherwise I seem perfectly normal, but it's like uh, the neurosis. Uh, it's oh, like, you know, oh, oh, maybe not so much. <laughs> okay, so we count down the top 10 things that make us go, wow. wow. And this week, no surprise, we're going to kick off at number 10 with... With Tom. Number 10. Howdy. It's the Grammy Awards. Did mm. you guys watch? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yes, okay. Yes. I may have had a different reaction because I did the perfect thing finally, which is I waited like 45 minutes until they, after they started here in LA at five o'clock. And then I was able to basically fast forward through every commercial, which makes them zip by. And I was blown away by the Grammys. I'm still huh. watching them. I'm huh. still thinking about them. <laughs> really? I really am. Huh. Do you feel like a little morsel between two snapping dinosaurs about to snaffle you up? Because I don't think James liked them. That's actually the description <laughs> of the show, if you look at it. Uh, we, uh, Paul I will... is a morsel <laughs> between two snapping turtles. I will tell you one thing that I liked. Okay. Anna Kendrick's dress. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the a whole show. That's it right there. And the rest uh, of it could, uh, uh, could go to bloody places as far as I'm concerned. Is it because <laughs> you're old and grumpy and no longer can appreciate any music? No. In fact, because it, it seemed like it was geared towards old and grumpy people because that's all it was, was, you know, <laughs> oh, Diana Ross and, and, and well, uh, yeah, Dolly Parton and, and old grumpy people. Separating you two momentarily. Tom, tell us what it was about it that you love so much. Everything. I mean, the opening number, just the opening number with Camila Cabello and Ricky Martin and Arturo uh, Sandoval and in the, Havana. And Havana. And the set was amazing. And Ricky Martin, you know, it's 20 years since Ricky Martin did let Vita Loca on the Grammys. Has it really been that And long? he was so, I don't want to say it, fucking handsome in his white suit and unbuttoning his button and his big He, he has dark aged shoes. like a fine oh, wine. Oh, with his mustache. He was the <laughs> sexiest thing. So that's like, okay, if I get one good number, I'm good. Okay. And then it's like, ladies and gentlemen, Alicia Keys, who was a tremendous host. They leaned into her musicianship at one point later she in the played evening. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I did like the two piano thing. That was good. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. She had a white piano and a black piano and she had, her left hand was on the white piano, her right hand was on the black piano and she was playing like a, a, a Joplin rag and then she did a Roberta Flack. It was like this free-flowing like tribute to some of the great artists. Okay, negative Nancy here. Can I ask a question? Ahead, sure. You play the piano with both hands, right? So what is the How big is deal any about playing two pianos? It's called theater. It's or, called visuals. Or showing off, I think. You know. But it was it was so cool, I thought. Yeah. And I love that she had her hair in a, a kerchief when she grew up. But then she's like, you know, she was all about women and music, what music meant. And then she introduced some of her sisters, Backlit, Sex in the City, Lady Gaga, Jada Pinkett, J-Lo. J-Lo in an amazing that hat. Hat. ridiculous. <laughs> not, ridiculous. Not since no. Latoya went to Michael's funeral has there been such a wild. No, 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 no. I, I like the toy at Michael's funeral. What is but, the point of being on TV if you're going to wear a hat that completely obscures your face? It was, it, it it was, was hot. Silly. It if was you're J-Lo and you've worn every outfit known to man, it's like, why not wear a white brim hat? But I'm bearing the no, 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 but, I, but I will say, hold on. Speaking of fashion, though, yeah. that Alicia Keys in the Mugler clamshell dress was out of this world. That, that, on the red carpet that, before. Yes, that gave me a boner. And then when she was, um, the, the performance where she was like in the bordello and she had the Josephine Baker hair, I thought that was fantastic. I thought Cardi B stole the show. I thought she was absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Did you happen to hear a woman named Michelle Obama speak at the beginning? 
Yeah, I liked her silver dress or silver pants. But what I love is she's there. That people saw it was her. They were losing their shit. You know, Gaga spoke, Jada spoke, Joe spoke, and when Michelle spoke, she had to start again because everyone went ape shit. They were so excited to hear her and see her. And the director did such a great job. If you watch again, you should because it was like cut, 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 cut. It was like around to every, everyone was like ah, like the whole place was on fire. I liked, I did like that. I did like um, See, I can bring the, it around a the little Michelle bit. craziness. But I just didn't like the sort of forced, the way when they started off Lady Gaga was, yes, my they told what me was I was Lady different. Gaga? Lady Gaga this was like whole, channeling Alice Cooper or something. Just, uh, what oh, was that? You're that talking was about her performance. Yes, I certainly with am. With that stare into the camera. Like, I'm that? surprised that hasn't been picked up on more. It was the very odd. The stare odd. into the camera. Yeah, and the way she was know, talking. It was the first time you've seen Lady Gaga <laughs> perform. But she's weird. That's what we love about her. But this was this was a very forced weird. It was very odd, uh, weird, especially because she's been doing that. Is it Deja um, Weird? Um, no, no, no. I'm the one who's saying that, that Cardi B stole the show. Okay. So then I'm, I'm not even through the first five minutes yet. Know. And then You'll it's have like, to do a whole they're like, ladies and gentlemen, Sean Mendez, who's okay. so cute. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, because last time when I talked about Sean <laughs> Mendez's arms, you were like, I, who? You were I like, know. you didn't even know. And now I, I have been, been on, I, well, you and your Ariana Grande, <laughs> I've been on the Sean Mendez thing for over a year and a half now, two years now. I love him. What is it about his arms, they looked a bit sort of flabby to me. What, what do you need? Say, let me see your arms. What kind Take of right that freak hoodie. Take are off you? Take hoodie right now and show me your arms if you're coming for Sean Mendez. And then Sean Mendez in the first time of the show goes, late in the middle of his song, it's a duet because ladies and gentlemen, Miley Cyrus yeah. wearing a very similar outfit, looking amazing. Miley's Janelle Monet. Mm -hmm. One of the best performances I've seen on the Grammys ever. She channeled, she she transcended Michael Jackson and Prince. It was the best performance I, 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 I've James, seen. James, I heard it was described as a Klaus Nomi, channeling Klaus yes, Nomi. Yeah, yeah. Which, mm -hmm. But her, she had such swagger, it was hot. Casey Musgrave, who was on RuPaul's Drag Race this past two seasons in All Stars, won so many awards. I love her. I love that she's a country singer being re rewarded for her country album for Album of the Year. And she's so progressive in a way that doesn't threaten anybody. And no. she's British, isn't and she? And I learned about Brandy. She's no, she's not. She's country. I thought she had an accent. Brandy. I guess I wasn't paying much Carlisle, Brandy Carlisle. Who, again, I did not know about. Am I saying her name right? Brandy Carly. Brandy Carlisle, yes. Yeah. Carlisle. She is. She sang that song, and she just ripped my heart apart. And, I'm, and now I've downloaded her music. I was blown away, and there's so much more to talk about. There is. I might have a little bit more in my next you are, time uh, around. But I will just say, like, I think you missed something by skipping the ads, because I, I did skip I the ads. Google, to me, that was what it was all about. Google <laughs> and Apple dropped these ads for the, the Play Mode. A Apple has Playmojis, and Google has... No, Apple has Memojis. And Google has Playmojis. Oh, they're competing. I didn't realize. Yes, I, didn't realize. I thought they were the same so thing. So the first one I saw was Ariana Grande. And I thought, this is the music video for Seven Rings. It's so great. Yeah. And of course, it wasn't. It was just Apple's animated Memoji. It was really good, wasn't it? It was a really good video. And then, uh, what's Childish his name? Childish Gambino. Thank uh, you. Did the Playmoji. Yeah. Song which his song, which was also really super cool. I, I, I am happy about um, that he got Song of the Year. I, thought yeah. was, that was, that was I didn't even get a chance to talk with the winners, but it was so amazing. Now, I, I just, the Memojis, because we had we forgot mm, to figure this out the other day. Uh, it's, there's, if you have the Apple 10, you right. can make a meme of yourself and then have you like give messages as unicorns or as yourself or Ariana it's Grande. Monkeys or whatever. It's like, okay, it's this, so is, this is for the heart of hearing. This oh, is for the uh, senior set our show. <laughs> okay, James. Oh, good God, James. Number nine. Number nine. What made where, you go wow you, this where, week? Where did you say good God? Well, because I, it felt like we're at the end of the part. We talked so much about the Grammys, and we I was worried we'd run out of time. So, so let, let, me, let me just so guess. Welcoming. Let me guess. Always so Tom welcoming. went over, and so we, I have two seconds James, to talk. Reclaim that, your time. <laughs> talk as long as you like. Every word is like honey. What, what is my number nine? I don't even know. I wasn't here. It I, I've been paying attention. It is Velvet Buzzsaw. Oh, my God. Velvet Buzzsaw. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No, do you guys know what this is? Do you, do you know about? I've what? heard a little it's bit about it, on Netflix. but I need you to, to to break it down for me. <laughs> Can we start over again Velvet without Buzzsaw. the without the attitude, please? <clears throat> Velvet Buzzsaw. Um, mm. First of all, do you know the story of Henry Darger? Have you do you know the, the who Henry Darger is? I know that name. I don't. 
Henry Darger was um, is is an artist, a, an artist and a novelist. He was a janitor. He was a creepy Outside janitor. Outside artist. Yes, yes. He oh, was a creepy got it, got it, got it. janitor at an elementary school for thirty years. And when he died, they went into his 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 house and they discovered this treasure trove of art. These giant collages that he'd been building for years and years and years, and it was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And he had written a novel, fifteen thousand pages, called um, "The Story of the." Vivian girls in what is now known as the realm of the unreals of the Glendeco Anglican war storm caused by the child slave rebellion rolls right off the tongue. Right. Uh, so he had built this entire universe for 30 years. He'd been building these stories of these little Edwardian hermaphrodites, these little children, <laughs> these little girls with penises. And they were the slave rebellion. And he'd written this 15,000 page novel and these giant things in the art world and the literary world went bananas for it. And when now did he die? Were, he died. This was uh, in the seventies, and it wasn't okay. discovered until the nineties. Wow. And um, uh, so the art world went bananas for it. And these paintings now are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. It's like it's because it's there's there's no more, and it was discovered after his death. So this is sort of the story of what this is. This is sort of a uh, this is a horror version version of that story, and it's a, a satire of the LA art scene, which I didn't realize was so ripe to be satirized. I didn't right? know there was an LA, the art, LA scene. art scene. Is <laughs> absolutely hysterical because it is sort of you know the New York art scene is about the art and about the you know and LA of course is about the hype and about the game and about the you the know celebrity the, the celebrities buying the art and the, 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 the hundreds of millions of dollars that are poured into it when it would just to, so these celebrities can is Jake Gyllenhaal plays this flamboyant bisexual art critic and uh, he, he a friend uh, works at a gallery discovers this treasure trove of art and that's really this cra and everyone in the art world just goes bananas for it but the art every anyone who looks at it they become obsessed with it with it and they fall into the art and then the art ends up killing them and however it is that they so now I'm into it <laughs> yeah and so everything and but but the art scene it, it's all about everyone's talking art speak gobbledygook and everyone's in their fabulous little outfits and they're all in these impossibly chic houses and everything like that but they keep buying the art and anyone who buys the art they be, just become like obsessed with it and then like the art ends up murdering them in whatever way it is so did the, the little hermaphrodite girls make appearances and, and tear well, people to pieces everyone dies in a different way because in a different way that they uh, the, however they approach the art is how the art is going to kill it. It's just very weird very crazy. It has a, a long build up to, to, to where it begins but I I urge everybody to give this a shot. It's a series, right? No, no, no. It's just it's, oh. a, it's a movie. Oh, it's cool. Tony Collette. It's um, Rene Russo. It's uh, Johnny Johnny. I mean, um, um, what's what's his name? Uh, I know who you mean. The uh, from jo no. Um, but who did I just say? Johnny. Where am I? But, I, sm I smell toast. <laughs> Bro Broken Back Mountain. Where, where? Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. Oh, yeah, and um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of other people in it that are. Everyone is really fantastic. We're getting the wrap up, but I have to ask: He's being criticized for <laughs> his portrayal of a gay person. Would you offend no, no, by it? He's, no, no, no. Let's let's be clear here. Okay, he's bisexual. Thank you. Okay, I didn't know okay. that. But he's he's very flamboyant and he's very it's hysterical. It's just it's it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. And then it turns very quickly. It turns into serious. It's horror. interesting because like it's horror, but it seems like the true real story of this is also incredibly fascinating. Is there a it, documentary well, about that too? About, about there should Henry be. Darger? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff oh, out there. Is. And I would okay. think that you would he would somebody that would really speak to you. And mm -hmm. I think this is something, Fenton. This is I know I say this these things to you all the time. I really want you to watch it because I think you'll come away with it with the metaphor of what art is and how it, it, it the I obsession love it. I, I'm going to watch it yeah right away okay number 1098 number 8 <laughs> I do <laughs> it's right. It's become a mental. You have one job, nine, Fenton. Ten, one job nine, to count and down. Eight. Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm going to switch it up because actually, James, I watched something on Netflix this week. Yeah. Um, have you seen? Um, oh, no, I can't even remember what it's called. Russian Doll. Oh, the Natasha Lyonne. Yeah. At your uh, at your mention, I did see two and a half episodes. Mm -hmm. This what? is sort of a Groundhog's Day set in the party scene. Yeah, it's it's like nice. It's, it's actually very. It's set in East Village, and what's amazing is that most of it seems to be filmed around Tompkins Square Park. And in fact, one person, one critic, went so far as to say the whole series. Well, I should tell you before I get into that yeah. what it is. Natasha Leon, who is 
Oh, Incomparably yeah. brilliant. Like any role she plays, she just is it. She's well, not, Liberty, it's Natasha Meryl Leon. Streep-like, actually. Like it's acting. Hmm? M- M- well, well, Liberty, but Natasha Leon, Party oh, Monster, absolutely. Star. Well, yes. she played Gitsy mm-hmm. in not Gitsy. She played Brooke. Yeah, she is Party the reason Monster. to watch. She, if, she, if she's one of the reasons that you have to watch this, just to see her. Oh no, she is the reason yeah. to watch yeah, this. Yeah. I mean, I I was really interested by the whole this whole Groundhog Day. Thing because well, there's another movie where out, Happy Birthday. It's basically to me. a character gets killed and they wake up again where they were and then they get killed again and again yes. and they get sort of rinse and repeat. Right. It's 1993 Groundhog Day, but interesting because I started doing a little Wikipedia and the number of like these time loop movies, yep. like two, 2016, 2017, there's like half a dozen of them every single year, and I'm I'm just so fascinated why this sort of this well, idea is catching on and, it, it, and has become a sort of You drive trend. to work, you go to your cubicle. On Fridays, We've you do the, the wow report. Of, yeah. You go yeah. to work, you go to your cubicle. On Friday, because... you do the wow report. <laughs> Maybe something like that. No, 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 but it's because we are living in an alternate timeline right now, and we all know that because when the Higgs boson uh, in the CERN laboratories divided the timeline in 2014, um, that's when they you now we start talking about the Berenstein Bears and and what is that called the um, the Mandela the Mandela effect? Oh yeah, where it's everyone. Some people remember Nelson Mandela dying, and other people don't. It, they remember him dying in the early 2000s, and other people remember him dying in 2016, and that's when we realized that there so are. There's- there's, You're saying there's two parallel. Well, there, there's there's it's a multiverse. There's there's oh. millions of pair of. But we are we, but we are we now you and I are in the worst timeline, and that's the one where Trump was elected. And there's other. So there's time another timeline where, where Hillary was elected. Yes. And is Jeff Lewis live in both timelines or just one? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's, it's like some people remember the Baron Steen Bears, and some people remember the Baron Stain Bears when you were little, and that's a that's a Mandela I effect. Have where where the, no idea what you're talking. It's about. It's a children's book. Okay. And, and everybody remembers it differently and it's because there are different timelines hmm. and so that, breaking that, news everyone <laughs> so, so that, and we are we right now are in the worst timeline and how do you know it's the worst because this well how could it get any bad <laughs> could, it, could it be any worse <laughs> trump is all our president it could be so, but anyway, but, but that's why every, there's there's this obsession right now with these alternate timelines and time looping and and things like that and all okay, this thank things you. happening. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it, this is really it, it is really good. I mean, uh, one of the great things about it is a binge worthy series of half hour episodes. Oh, see, that makes it so thank easy. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Right. And and they're, they're just little so more you souls. really feel you're getting through it. And Natasha created this with uh, Leslie Headland and Amy Poehler. Yeah. Mm. And Some apparently, really smart it comes from um, her life, Natasha's life, who said that a sort of premise is adapted from her life as an artist and an addict. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's really kind of fascinating. And at first I was like, oh, I've seen this me, I've seen this thing before, but she's so compelling. And she then is. she is in a free falling elevator about to die, standing next to Charlie Barnett, who is oh, amazing. Yeah. And he plays this other character. So she's in this time loop and she meets someone else. She says, aren't you scared you're about to die? And he says, no, I die all the time. And she meets, and that's why I'm up wait, to in you know, the story. Wait, that's interesting because mm. um, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt came back with a new season, and there's a great episode where it's sliding doors, and they, they all go into a, a, a parallel uh, timeline and see what would have happened in another timeline. And so that is and, something that's happening right now and a lot of people are interested in. And you have to watch it, James, because it is all filmed pretty much, it feels like, in the East Village in and around Tompkins Square Park. Mm. And and one critic went so far as to say that the show is a meditation on Tompkins Square Park riots oh. and the loss of Bohemian New York. Yeah! Wait, so it takes I, place in 93, so that was I the year of the so. riots. But no, I don't, no, no, the I riots were really, in 89, I they? don't really see it, but, you know... Um, it feels contemporary. I, I, a me. lot of people are, like, spouting off, sort of... I mean, that's also what's interesting to me, is, like, the way people have just jumped on this one and elevated it and say it's so brilliant. Because to me, it's like, you know, timeline, time loop stuff. It's well, Netflix bought Billboard, so they were on uh, something. Looper. The algorithm told them that we would like this, 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 this. Remember this. Looper with um, uh, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was it a few years ago? That was right. so good. And then there's that Tom Cruise one. Um, oh, that is a good which one. Which is fabulous. 
fabulous. Yeah, that what's is it a really good called? Uh, Day After Tomorrow. Yes, right? I, yes. that is fantastic. Yeah. Cocktail? I don't even, Cocktail? I don't even like Tom Cruise, <laughs> but that is a really good movie with Emily Blunt, right? Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay, so Edward's been giving us the wrap up. Edward's oh. are, is standing in for Blake. I know. Hi, Hi Edward. Edward. Hi, huge fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> Long time listener, Long first time, time caller. <laughs> <laughs> so, Edward. Huge um, fan. Now, shut the fuck up. Huge fan. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break, so why don't you hit us up with a question? Question. And speaking well, of Russian dolls, what's the record for the largest Russian doll ever made? Oh, that is a good Ooh, question. Uh, is it? Okay. You listen to Powerball on Radio <laughs> Andy, Sirius XM. We'll be back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report. Um, hey, you know, uh, you know what's coming up soon, guys? DragCon in LA. Any minute RuPaul's now. DragCon LA, it's back. 24th, 25th, 26th of May. RuPaul'sDragCon.com. Get your tickets. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm Fenton, here with Tom and James and Edward. Hello. Also known as Eddie. Eddie, you have your yeah. own podcast, don't you? Oh my gosh, I do. Thanks yeah. for the plug. We'll give it a plug. Wow, shameless. I love it. Yeah. Um, it's called Lives of the Party. You can find it on iTunes or uh, any podcast, Spotify. It's me and my three friends. Living Always in LA. Always talking about Britney. It's a lot of Britney. It's a lot Britney, of Britney. Britney, Britney, Britney. It's a lot of dating in your 30s and why we're still single and all that stuff. So. <laughs> and Britney. Oh, dating in your 30s. I, I'd like to tune in and find out more. <laughs> so what was the question? Um, the question, largest Russian doll ever made. The largest Russian doll ever made is no, a... No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's, it's 10 stories high and there's a thousand <laughs> pieces. How dare you? <laughs> um, I'm going to say 1,001. I'm going to say 1656 pieces. Oh, wow. You guys. Um, no, that's actually 51 pieces. Oh, and we're like, yeah, it's made by a Russian. Russians. Painted by um, Yula. How, how, how tall I, was it? How big was it? It was like two feet high and what? it goes all the way down to 0.12 inches. Point twelve. So that's it's like probably, little, like not even half an inch. That's that, how little the smallest piece is. Mm. Huh. Hmm. It's like a grain of sand. <laughs> All right. So we are counting down the top 10 things that made us go. Wow. wow. And we have reached. Number seven. Number six. Seven. Number seven. Can we like arrange? I need a counter. I need. Do we have somebody standing there yes. with the cards? Edward, Ten, well, nine, you need to be standing eight, with cards. Exactly. Seven. Tom Campbell. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. The Grammys were so great. I couldn't fit it into one segment, so I segregated this. Segregated. Oh, that's segregated. terrible. Segment. <laughs> Segmented. Segment. I don't no, segregate. No, no. Um, there were many tributes, as James so acidly put. I can't say words today. The um, there my first and maybe favorite was to Dolly Parton, who, by the way, you could pay tribute to every week, and I think it would be okay. But it was an amazing Katy Perry and Carrie Musgraves sang, and then Marin Morris, Marin Morris, and Miley Cyrus, Miley, Miley returned. I loved th that moment with Miley and her singing together, and Jolene. Miley but belting it out. It reminded me of Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland, <gasps> where that moment oh, where you, you when see- when they sing Happy Days Are Here yeah, Again. And you see Barbara effortlessly just belting it out, and the other the older woman sort of like the shock on her yeah. face as she sees the younger generation they I really enjoyed that I love the fact that godmother and goddaughter right yeah. yes I, and it just is so sweet wasn't yeah. it it was and touching they, they, but they, they really played off each other very well I thought that was nice and then they sang uh, uh, Marin Morris and Miley came out and sang After the Gold Rush which is a song that Emmy Lou, Linda and Dolly did together as trio. And the night before, I just saw this online, but Dolly was given the Music Care Award and um, she was presented with the award by Emmylou Harris and Linda Ronstadt, who barely gets out because of her Parkinson. So they were reunited, if not in voice, in person. That was really moving to me. And the other thing that gives Dolly the number one thumbs up is she also was like, and here's a new song. Bitch isn't just resting on her laurels. Bitch is releasing new material. So Little Big Town came out, who I see on every award show, and I've kind of grown to like them. And they sang Red Shoes. So uh, some other uh, tribute awards? There was a there was an artist I just became familiar with named Diana Ross. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> if if Edward loves Britney, I love Diana Ross, and I'm always nervous. Diane, if you're listening, call me. Don't take this personally. This is you know this is constructive criticism. But like <laughs> uh, at the at the at the parade, the Thanksgiving parade, she had her hair in her face and like headband. Diana at the M- American Music Awards, she was also attributed, and she was a little loosey goosey, a little like I'll just walk through this. She was disciplined for this. For the she came out in an amazing red dress that had every Diana Ross trick you could imagine and want to see. She sang The Best Years of My Life, which is a song she had, no one knows, but it was appropriately single. And then she did reach out and touch somebody's hand. But instead of asking people to hold hands, she now asked them to throw their hands in the air and sway. So, so she really changes things up. <laughs> yeah, it gets crazy. No, but it's like, <laughs> an artist has people to be, throw their hands in the out, air? Reach what out. is happening in the world? I want to it's, that's little, insane. It's supposed to be reach out and it's touch. It's new. I've never heard of anything so new. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> hand. Make this world a better place. Yeah, we know how can. it goes. Okay, but so I think it should be. But now my aunt's the Motown. I think it should be. Reach out. Throw your hands uh-huh. in the air she like you don't change care. It up. Oh, my God. She should throw the hand. Okay, anyway. Keep going. Next one. Okay. Oh, the Motown. I'm done. No, the oh, Motown. You got one the Motown. You got one more. Please, please. please. <laughs> okay, well, I'll go on about the Motown. Please then. do. No, no, tell me about Motown. What did you think? I'm done. Oh. You, I kept trying to do my thing. Okay, keep doing your thing. I'm done. Um, and then the Motown thing happened, and the Aretha Franklin well, thing no, happened. No, I really liked I'm not going to be able to do my thing because then I, now you're going to you're going to get no, mad. You know, J Lo was criticized for doing a Motown tribute, right. which I thought was kind of spectacular and fun and very J Lo and a lot of booty shaking. But my most my, my heart really was there for a very concise but beautiful tribute to Aretha Franklin with Yolanda Adams, Andre Day, who I love, and the incomparably talented Fantasia, and they sang Natural Woman. And I, I, that's a lot of tributes. It is. In one night. And that's why, that's why I thought the Grammys were super generous, and I learned new artists, and I praised old artists, and everybody I thought showed up, and it was the year of the woman, and things like that. I have to, uh, there is one thing I have to ask you, though. Ariana Grande was not there. And what do you think about, because I, uh, confession, yeah. I was listening to last week's show, and you said, you know, you were talking about Ariana Grande and being ahead of it but you know yeah and i love that new album but and i was like i had driving to palm springs this weekend i, I had an ariana grande epiphany of like oh my god she's so amazing welcome to I'm the back, club. You guys. I'm and, back the, the broadcast and, and, and fuck me she wasn't on the card like so what is that all about why uh, okay, okay what's the what's the What'd what's you hear? the scoop What'd you hear? The, the scoop was is that it, they they had asked she wanted to perform seven rings they wanted her to perform um the the other thank you next thank you next and she wa- she put her dug her heels in right. and said no i'm not going to now I understand the 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 idea that if an artist wants to perform something and they, they there was a it was it was an ups, like she was upset about it. Yep. But I thought it sort of hurt her because it was uh, an incredible show with a lot of women performers and it, it really would have yeah. it would have done well for her to be there. I think it was something that she should have really just said, "Okay, that's fine. I will perform. Thank you next." Um, I all because at the same time you notice that Kanye is st- won't go to the the Grammys anymore, and a couple other you know um, I think Beyonce has sort of fallen right. in, and I think it hurts them in the long run because I think I think they think that they're making this giant statement, but the show goes on without them, and the yeah. show is fantastic without them, and you don't really need you you find that they really are you don't need them to have but a good why, show. It, my question so is it, why do they like why would they even pres- you got two hits, Seven Rings, and what was the other one? Uh, thank, thank you, you next. next. Thank you, next. Like, what? who cares which one she performs? Let her perform what she wants to perform. I, it's so extraordinary to me that producers would say, no, you producers, can't. Producers, network, who knows? Well, it's because, well, right. they, well, whoever, it's because but, like, if you're know. nominated yeah. for the song, they want you to sing the song that you're nominated for, as oh. opposed to pushing something new that has just come up that's not going to be nominated for another year. Oh. But as we said last year, Ariana is breaking all the rules. Yes. Like let, that's old thinking. Like sell the next thing. I, I think no. she would have been appreciated singing whatever. But I agree. Show up, make it work. Yeah, no, um, I just I, I thought that she she ended up shooting herself in the foot over it because the show was fantastic and nobody really was saying oh it's it doesn't work without Ariana here. Nobody was saying that, and so no, everyone, even Beyonce, everyone can somebody fills in yeah, some and, other and, great yeah. talent. And, and, and if Kanye is sitting at home saying I'm not going to be a part of it, well, everyone said well then that's your fault. You you don't need we don't need you here. Got it. Number six, James. Number six. That summer. And, you know, I thought maybe we'd talked about this on the show before because I watched that summer 
You did. Um, yeah, I watched it. Like, um, I had talked about it when um, I, I was doing something about previews, and I had seen oh, a bunch of. Oh, uh, that's what it yeah. was. Right, right, um, right. So you did see this. I did see it. Yeah. That summer um, it's is. Uh, it's if you know the Grey Garden story, mm. um, big and a little bit, big and little Ed Beal, uh, been made by the Maisley brothers in two, nineteen the nineteen seventies, yeah. and it's the story of these two eccentric aunts, rich, rich, rich. They were Jackie Kennedys and in the Red. As well as ants. Yep. And this is another telling of that story, which we didn't even know that there was another another uh, telling of it out there. Peter Lindbergh, the the photographer, and Lee Radzwell. Lee Radzwell. Uh, sorry, back up. It's Peter Be- Beard. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Peter Beard. Uh, Peter Beard, the photographer, and uh, his ex girlfriend, who was Lee Radzwell, um, who's Jacqueline Kennedy's, Kennedy's sister, J- Jacqueline Onassis's sister. In the summer of 1972, they went to Montauk. Prior to Grey Gardens. Prior to right. Grey Gardens, yes. And they were staying at Andy Warhol's compound. Of course and, they were. <laughs> uh, and there's all these home movies in the beginning of Andy being a goofball on the beach, which we've never really seen him outside of New York. It was very strange. Truman Capote's there. Bianca Jagger's there. And it's very chic. It's very fabulous. And then they go over to spend time with the ants. And they did get the idea in their head that they're going to make a documentary. This is before the Maisley Brothers do it. And so they are doing all this sort of back footage of showing the house and the raccoons living in the house. It's almost like the pilot or the sort of the teaser tape, isn't it? Right? Because yes. they film them and the, Lee yes. Ratzel well is there. Uh, the sizzle tape. And, <laughs> and the, the thing about this is, is the, these ants are, Big and Little Evil, are so compelling and so fantastic, such fantastic creatures and, and they have that locked on. They have that yes. way of talking. That East Coast, Miss Porter's, Foxcroft. Yes. It's the way they talk. Mid-Atlantic, what and they call it. And they all are sitting around with Lee Ratzel, who I always thought was a huge I snob. Think it's so, um, and she was, but she was very interested, and she loves her aunt. Yes. And the way she just gives them enough, you know, all this, all this, they, she lets them play. It's fascinating to watch. There's a, a moment where they're talking about the cats. I don't know if you remember this. And there's, I'm all ears. Th- there's, there's like 40 <laughs> cats living in this house. And Lee says, oh, who is that cat? And little E. Beale says, why, that's Teddy Kennedy. And we call him that because he looks, he looks just like, from that angle right there, he is the <laughs> spitting image. But before he got fat, of course. <laughs> and it's like they, they, they're just having these like crazy conversations. And the, and the exterminators unst- come in and try to evict them and, and Lee saves, sends yes, off the they, exterminators. They, yeah, because they, the, the, they came into the, the super, or the, the people of East Hampton are trying to close the house down and they come in with fire hoses and just right. hose the whole house down and destroy all the art, destroy the furniture, destroy everything. And it's all rotting, all the wood is rotting, everything like that. So Lee comes in and they're trying to get the, the electricity back up and the water running again and it's just fast and then at the very end they realize that they don't that they can't do the documentary and that's when they bring the Maisley brothers in and they decide to make Grey Gardens but for 40 years now there's been this treasure trove of because mm. all just we ever have it just came out yeah right? all we ever have of Big and Little, little Edie Beale is Grey Gardens and now you have this other whole movie where Little Edie Beale is wearing this this scarf with a giant fish that she's safety pinned to it this gold fish that's dangling on her face and she's telling her stories and uh, and they're talking and it's just the more you see of these people the more you want to know them they made a movie and a Broadway musical out of Grey Gardens is there a sequel in this or prequel and then there's the HBO with Drew Barrymore and Jessica Lange and I love the, the musical it's one of my favorite musicals it's just fantastic Amazing. And yeah. where can we, where'd you see this? This is Hulu. So I, I, Hulu. Went to, I went to Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> okay, number five. Number five. I saw a Lego, the Lego movie. The sequel. The no, Lego. The I second love Lego. the first one. And I oh love my the God. Lego Batman. The first one's amazing. They're well, really good. This is the, actually the fourth Lego movie. Because first you had the Lego movie, yeah. and then you had Batman, yeah. and then you had Ninjago, and now you have Lego Movie Part oh, 2. Right. Now, is this Philip Ward who did it this is, one? It is. It's, love it's him. Chris Miller and Philip Lord. Yeah, they're this so good. Winning combination. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize, I mean, I was like, who are they? Where do they come from? They did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Yes, yes. And they also did 21 Jump Street, and they did a right. bunch of those, the, the remakes and stuff. They're really funny. Mm, really and really funny. In fact, I met him when he was writing 21 Jump Street. He was um, at a restaurant down the street, and I went with Theron, and there was just this hot guy sitting with a laptop, and we did a little video of him, and I called him the hottest guy I've ever seen eating a, a hamburger. And it was like a video that we did. And, <laughs> and I you've did, seen a lot of guys eating hamburgers. I know. And I went over to him, and I was like telling him how cute he was. and Where's how. Where's the I, video? Uh, it's 
it's online somewhere. It's on teacup. It's on the teacup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but I was just saying, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm writing a movie about um, I'm doing a remake of Twenty One Jump Street, and I was like, ha, good luck with that. <laughs> and then it turns out he it would be like the biggest movie of the year. Well, we will post that video on the Wow Report. I'm sorry, keep going. Uh, well, I, 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 no, no, shouldn't no. you be a voice artist on the next Lego? <laughs> Come on. It, it's uh, I suppose really. I mean. Uh, I don't know how much to get into the story because it's it's quite hard to explain, but it basically walks this line between this Lego world and then, as is revealed in the first one, the, the child, somewhat a spoiler yeah. alert, it's kids playing with their Legos and their dad was a control freak and wouldn't let the kid play with the Legos. That was movie part one. This movie, dad says, well, if I've let my son in the basement to play with my Legos and mess them up, I'm going to have to let your little sister in. And so little sister arrives with all these Duplo creations. And Duplo, for those who don't know, is Lego for juniors. It's like junior Lego. And the bricks are extra big. And they're sort of very cheerful. And they made these amazing sort of Dada surreal villains that are really sweet and talk in cutesy voices <laughs> and throw hearts that blow people up. So they're really cute, but also evil. And the leader of the, the supposedly evil leader is... Uh, Queen whatever I want to be, played uh -huh. by Tiffany Haddish. And I have to say, actually, the music in this in this is well, amazing. Cause, cause There's a song called Catchy Song. Yes. It is so fantastic. Let's actually, we've got to take a quick listen. Let's listen to it. <sighs> because ev because everything is awesome. Like that is one of the great <laughs> They have algorithms to write these songs, right? So we know that we love them. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's like brilliantly crafted, and, and we can't stop listening to it in the car. Uh, it's on loop. But it's really good. And you know what's interesting? It's actually not doing that well. Oh. And a lot of people have been weighing in, like, well, why is it, you know, is it that the humor is too clever for kids? And it's not, it's really a movie made for adults, but in a kid's but my, uh, Nolan loved it. Yeah. Well, I, I do know that because I saw the Batman in the first one, and I every time I watch them, I laugh hysterically. I think it is so fun. They're so clever and so well they written, are. and just I I just fall into it. I I love them. So and, I'm excited and Batman's to see this. in this one is and it's so absurdly macho, and it's hilarious because because basically um, the, <laughs> the, the the all the, these sort of these boy type characters have to go to the sisterverse, which is this little girl's room, and Batman gets made over and covered in glitter <laughs> and it's put in a sort of white cape and it, it, this sort of girlification but it isn't it isn't sexist it's girlification and it's every bit as mean and twisted as, as what the little boy's doing and it's it's just really it's really pretty cute and great and Chris Pratt plays uh, Emmett and um yeah it's in theaters now so hmm. you know I, I oh you know what else those guys did uh, Chris Miller and Phil Lord into the Spider Verse, oh, yes, which is which also is, incredibly brilliant. And people say that that, that should have been nominated for a lot of Academy Absolutely. Awards. And, yes. Oh yes, no question. Yeah. It is nominated. Is it? Oh, mm -hmm. oh that's a, what a relief. Edward, we have to take a break. Question, what have you got for us? Question number two. I promise this one's a little bit better. There have been only two people to win all four general field awards at the Grammys: Record, Album, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. One male, one female. Who are they? Hmm. Is that the EGOT then? No. no, it's the Grammy EGOT. Oh. Wait, what was I? Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, one, okay. one more time. One, yeah. Okay, there have only been two people to win all four general field awards at the Grammys. General field? So, What's that? Uh, like best song, best album, so best, best record, best album, best song of the year, and best, best new, new artist. artist. Excellent. Mm. One male, one female. Well, now that I understand the question... We'll have the answer right after the break. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to The Wow Report. We're counting down the top 10 things that make us go, wow. wow. I'm Fenton here with Tom and Jane St. James and Eddie. Hi. Hi. We should say Blake is back home because his sister's having a baby. Yes, she had a baby on Saturday. She oh. had it. Yeah, oh. yeah, they induced labor on Saturday. Oh. Um, Uncle, I, Blake. <laughs> Uncle Blake. Uncle Blake. Um, I'm going to go out on well, a limb What is the oh, question? Go, yeah, go ahead. What is the question? Oh, there have been trivia. two people to win all four general field awards at the Grammys. Best record, album, song of the year, and best new artist. One male, one female. Who are they? I'm going to say... Stevie Wonder and Beyonce. I'm going to say Katy Perry and Sam Smith. 
Oh. I have absolutely no you're, idea. You're going to say David Bowie soft okay. sell in Madonna. <laughs> all, all together. Yes, it was a mashup. <laughs> What's the answer? The answer is Adele. Oh, sure, of course. And the male is Christopher Cross. <laughs> Sailing. Oh. Christopher Cross. Cross won all four in the same year. That's right. Oh, and it was Arthur's yeah. theme. Wow. Yeah. I don't think it was Sailing. Was it Sailing? Yeah, it was and his first think bit. of Laura. And, uh, he was, was a new related. artist. Yeah, in the, well, the year 1981, well, he was a new artist. Yes. I know, but he always sounded like an old artist. Like, even when he was, like, sailing <laughs> and no, all that. Really, 1981, I really did love me some Christopher Cross back in 1981. It's, it's, it, I think they call it Yacht Rock now. Oh. Yacht Rock? And he, why? The, the series why they, will have why, a channel in the summer why called Yacht Rock. Going? It's just kind of indulgent I'm on FM a boat. kind of like songs, yeah. Hmm. Okay, we're at number four. Number four. I uh, want to turn you guys on to a series that I'm just discovering and I'm loving. It's on Comedy Central, which, you know, Comedy Central, I watch a lot. I love The Daily Show. I loved Amy Schumer. Felt like it was for the gays and for the straights. I loved, and this is their last season, uh, the, the the Broad City Girls. Mm -hmm. And there's a new one because those that's going away. It's called The Other Two. And it was co-created. It just started in late January. It was co-created from the former Saturday Night Live head writers from a couple of years ago, Chris Kelly and Sarah Schneider. And they were they were bemoaned. Supposedly, like Saturday Night Live was getting really good a couple of years ago, and then they they left. Um, they're still with Lorne Michaels, so I guess they left on good terms. And everyone was like, "Oh my God, that's the end of Saturday Night Live!" But they're amazing. And here's the premise: it's you know, it's just so well executed. But. Um, there are the other two are are Carrie and Brooke. That's the characters. It's Drew Tarver and Helene York. They're new to me, and they're kind of twenty something ne'er do wells. She used to be like a dancer twelve years ago when she was young, and she's no good anymore. She sort of sleeps around, and he is um, an actor who's like up for like commercials. Guy who smells fart at party, um, but <laughs> their mother Molly Shannon. Stop right there, everybody watch. Who's wearing incredible Kate, uh, John and Kate plus eight wig. Just that great like kind of thing. She, her her younger son, uh, played by Case Walker, who's this hotshot like 12-year-old, um, has become a viral star overnight. Has become Justin Bieber overnight. And his name is Chase Dreams. <laughs> and he's called Chase Dreams, <laughs> Molly Shannon says in an interview with uh, Coda and Kathy Lee, because that's what one of the rocks in her bathroom says, Chase Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean it's a good name, it gives actually. you a taste and um, uh, Wanda <laughs> Sykes plays the kid's agent and Ken Marino an actor plays um, his manager and there's just it's just it tears apart pop culture, Hollywood, viral video stars, and the Carrie and Brooke, the, 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 the other two, are so kind of deliciously despicable. And their one redeeming factor is that Chase Dreams is still kind of a kid and everything's happening around him and they kind of protect his innocence. But it's hilarious. And Chase Dreams has his own songs that are written by Brett McLaughlin, who we know and love because he writes all of Troy Sivan's hits oh, yeah. and he does the RuPaul's Drag Race things. So it's this this little gem and I knew that Brett was working on something and he told me about it and it, you know I can't remember anything it goes one year or the other and then I like my DVR went off and I was on Comedy Central and I started watching the show and it's it's hilarious it's really funny really have you worth seen watching. that ever? I have not I will yeah, I just saw I had a Molly Shannon sighting at Whole Foods uh, about a week ago go on yeah no, what I, section I, she was she was walking out and she was talking on the phone and I didn't want to say anything but she was talking very loudly to somebody and I was just like oh, Molly Shannon did you follow her a little bit I did for a couple of for about <laughs> <laughs> like for about half a block, yeah. Into her car, holding on to the bumper. Um, but she, I love Molly Shannon. She can do no wrong in my book. She's absolutely, absolutely and she's fantastic. the mother, and she's fantastic. fantastic. It just gives you an idea. It's hard to. It's it's all in the execution. You know, the premise is the premise, but it's all just every every line and everything that happens. This other thing is that in the second episode, Brooke, the girl who's twenty eight, who's like a total tramp, she goes to a party and she comes best friends with this woman who brings her home, and she's like, it turns out that the woman is a eleven year old girl who's a makeup blogger. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you live here. Yeah, I live with my mother. That's so cool of you. Anyway, watch the other two on Comedy Central. It's really, okay. really, really good. Thursday's 10.30. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. James, number three. 
Number three. Number three. I watched on Hulu. I, I've been branching <laughs> oh out. God. What and, did Netflix do to you? I, you know, they, where did Netflix <laughs> touch you on the dial, James? <laughs> How did Netflix hurt you? Um, I, I, I moved over to Hulu and I watched um, uh, the Grace Jones documentary, Blood Light and Bammy. I don't know if you've seen this. Blood I, Light. Blood Light and Bammy. I don't know what it means. Okay, thank you. I have no idea. They don't explain it. Okay. For, for some reason, it's just, or they did, and I wasn't paying attention. I don't know. But Grace Jones is somebody who was very important to me when I was coming out, when I was a teenager. And um, she was somebody in the early 80s. She was very mysterious, very chic. She was androgynous before Boy George and yeah. before Annie Lennox. And she was, you know, she had those great Jean-Paul Goud pictures and the videos that she did. Remember, Slave to the Rhythm, La Vie en Rose, My Jamaican Guy, I Need a Man, Pull Up to the Bumper. Yes. And you didn't see these videos on MTV. You had at a gay bar. Yes. There were gay clubs. And they still and play. Was, they, they were, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, but I remember being on a dance floor at the Copa, and when the song would come on the video, people would stop dancing, and everybody just sat with their jaw yeah. open. And it was just this incredible underground phenomena that didn't really bubble up into the mainstream until the late 80s when she got a little cheesy. But anyways, this is... um We all get a little cheesy in the late 80s, <laughs> don't you think? But she still is doing those songs, right? And she's still in those Philip Treacy hats and the Issey Miyake and Yoji Yamamoto outfits and she still has that great stage presence. Now, this is some this is a, a movie where it's not so much there's no archival footage. So it's not the story of. No, it, she's she's putting on a new show and uh -huh. she's doing new, she's in the recording studio and you see her going back to Jamaica and hanging out with her parents and and the family and everything like that. And that's all very interesting. You wish there would have been a little more archival footage from right. the, from the 70s and stuff. What were you surprised about seeing it? Well, the, the thing about her is she's sort of a Marlena Dietrich character in that she, Marlena Dietrich couldn't sing a note to save her life. <laughs> and yet she convinced herself that she was a great chanteuse and she performed yeah. by God come hell or high water. Yep. And she hypnotized people into thinking yes. that she was a great singer, even though she's down in law. And that sort of Grace Jones, Grace Jones is not a great vocalist. And yet she I has, she has such, a gorgeous voice. Well, but she has, she's, she's hypnotized you. She's convinced you that she's this great singer, but she's got this great stage presence. And that's what's, Fascinating and to is that watcher. formidable? Because she's scary as fuck, right? She is. So is that formidable energy present in this film? You know, the the thing is, the difference between the the Beals and her is, <laughs> and then no, because it's the same sort of idea right. here. It's the there are these mysterious characters. With the Beals, though, the more you peel back the onion, the more you want to know them. With with Grace Jones, it's sort of the opposite. I don't know that she needed to do this. I think she should have stayed a little more mysterious huh. because you see her in the clubs and she seems like she's sort of on E or she's doing this or you see her with her family. Like, she was always yeah. untouchable. She was always goddess-like, yeah. right? She, and she's the, very goddess-like. Yeah. And with this, the the more you know her, the less you really want to know her. And, it's, I, and I'm going to say this and you're going to get mad at me again. It's sort of like Madonna. Like the more we know about Madonna, the, the less she should, maybe Madonna should have, you know, left 20 years ago, left the stage 20 years ago. Beg to differ. Because mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have had hung up. <laughs> I think the world could tick have done Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock Well, you'll have to tune in to our special <laughs> top 10 Madonna moments To make us go wild Find the answer to that one When James is on vacation <laughs> In the alternate timeline, Madonna <laughs> did quit 20 years ago And that was the best timeline <laughs> Number two Number two you remember Michael Pressman, right? Yes, I love Michael Pressman. Michael Pressman worked here. We From, miss him. We do. Yes, he moved yes. to Florida. And then he moved to, to Florida to raise, his, to raise his... To be close to his family. Yeah. A terrible tragedy. We miss him every day. Yeah. But he... I follow him on Facebook. And... Um, <laughs> Does, 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 I experienced one of the most profoundly true things, thanks to Michael, that I've experienced recently. Um, he posted... Are you Okay. I always say you don't decide when you're going to eat avocados. Avocados decide when you will eat them. <laughs> Whenever I see Adam, his husband, bring them home, I know our week's schedule is no longer ours. <laughs> it is the avocados. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? I buy avocados all the time. They're hard as rocks. And I put them out. Thinking, Just keep my eye on these avocados and I will eat them when they're ripe. The next time I look... 
the avocados have turned to mush and I cannot eat them. <laughs> and there's a, like a lovely picture of avocados at like 1 p.m., 1 p.m., 1 p.m., avocado, avocado, 101, and the avocado's right. just gone to <laughs> rot. It's like you turn around and they decompose. Wait, they, this they, is something that makes you go, wow, this is terrible. This really, really, no, it hits really, home for a fat man. <laughs> it took my breath away because I was like, fuck me, that's true. Truth teller. I've had this Truth lifelong teller. problem with eating <laughs> avocados. I buy them. They always go rotten on me when I'm not looking. I never get to eat them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are I, avocados a thing outside of California? Did guacamole. You, but did you, uh, did you, guacamole. did you, did you, did, 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 did you buy avocados in, in England no, growing up? No, we didn't have avocados okay. in England. But We've just up, gotten back. Bananas. I mean, for God's oh. sake. Um, but uh, I've been in America a few years now <laughs> and grown to love the avocado. <laughs> and Edward makes the most amazing guacamole. In fact, he at the whole premise of him being here today was that we were going to be eating his homemade guacamole and chips. Wait, where, where oh, oh gosh, I didn't know that was a real thing. I wait, know. Yes. Oh, wait, wait, I'm wait. eating almonds instead. Wait, oh my God, Your was... boss asked you to make guacamole and you <laughs> thought he was joking? <laughs> I've made him guacamole so many times. I, this is the only Once. time I, I forgot. I was so <laughs> like a lot. It's it's like a long time. Ever since. <laughs> okay, I'm is Googling. that true? Is that your experience with the avocado? I don't really buy vegetables because I, I just throw them away. I would buy things that are already pre-made. How how to tell if an avocado is ripe? Well, you, you know how it's ripe, but how yeah. you have to give it a squeeze, you have to feel but, it. But you can't, you know, because in supermarkets they have the avocados out, and people go around crushing them. So that's another hazard that you've you, you're <laughs> picking up an avocado that's been over squeezed because it's been destroyed. I didn't know we could do whole segments about about our grocery. It struck me. <laughs> this was such a genius observation, and it's like what I thought was so brilliant about it. As I mean, Michael's brilliant anyway, but was just that it's one of those things that is true that you never think to to formulate about. <laughs> or to put into words. You could it's, run for president on that platform. <laughs> on the avocado platform. Oh, right. That is hysterical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, to keep your avocados last longer and stay fresh, <laughs> store with the pit and coat with olive oil or lemon juice in an airtight container in the fridge. Wait, is wait, that wait, from you? That you is you cut true. them open to see if they're ready? Well, no, it's got to have the... See, it can't be too soft because yeah. if it's too soft, it's probably gone black inside and it just tastes funky. It's got to be firm but yielding, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Firm but not, yielding. Not that's brown. how I like my man. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can't be brown either. Don't, when, it comes, when it turns brown, that's it. You're done. <clears throat> that's right. And, uh, and, and sp putting the olive oil. Anyway... No, I take a break. I just can't. I can't speak. I'm just salivating over guacamole any moment now. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll reveal the number one thing that made us go wow, wow. this week. You're listening to Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Okay, welcome back. The number one thing that made us go wow well this week. What is it? Number one. Jeff Bezos exposes Pekka. That is actually the New York Post. I mean, New York Post so good. wins yes. the headline. Uh -huh. That's fantastic. I mean, the New York Daily News normally wins because I think they've done some of the most amazing cover headlines. And the, the New York Post sometimes <clears throat> leans towards Trump. They're, they're, right. they're, they're a bit right wing sometimes. But exposes Pekka. So clever yeah. because but Pekka is the name David of Pecker, the editor yeah. of the National Enquirer. And it works on two levels because, because Jeff's his, his dick pics are about to drop any minute now. Right. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I've tongue. said for a long time I'm not that prescient, but like we are going to elect a president very soon if we haven't already whose penis we're going to see. This is, you know, uh, it's like uh, yeah. introducing a gun into a play. The gun must go the, the, off. Check off you, the check and now off. that there are dick pics, we're going to vote for the penis, right? We're going to get the biggest for the beautiful uh, genitalia. Now let's mm. keep it neutral. Oh, right. But um, and 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 more is unraveling. But supposedly, you know, Lauren Sanchez, who's the mistress, All right? Who used to be? Remember, she used to be in the Channel Thirteen case. She was Julie Barbary, wasn't she? No, no, that was no. She was on Channel Thirteen, and she was <clears> with <throat> that hunky guy with the cleft chin, who's now on CBS. Oh, I can't remember his name. But they would give the news standing up. And they would do the news kind of like back to back, like he was, she was, uh, he was behind her, so it was sort of doggy style. They gave the news doggy style, <laughs> and they were so sexy. But now they just do the eleven o'clock news again. Well, she was also on <laughs> Dancing down. with the Stars, and she's also been on. Um, uh, she had a TV show. Um, She's been around, and she's married to like a CA agent. Yeah. And I once went to the uh, years ago. I went to the um, 
the Vanity Fair uh, Oscar party to help cover it because I was working at a company. And she pulled up. She's like a reporter, supposedly. And she pulled up in the biggest, longest Rolls Royce, like 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 a cartoon drawing from Top Cat of a Rolls Royce uh, limo and came out in this plunging dress and was not working. So she is always she was, pulled she was off she men was, and money mm, and favors. She was the first season of So You Think You Can Dance. She posted right, that. Before yes. Kat Dealey. Before, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. But supposedly it was her brother who is a Trump supporter yes. who leaked the photos. But I have to say... I see Trump's paw prints all over this. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Plus the Saudi Arabia connection because, right, Saudi Arabia, they murdered the Washington Post journalist in the consulate in Turkey. Terribly dark. They then embarked on a whole campaign of wooing Western press. And and the National Enquirer puts out a whole book called... The New Kingdom. Well, because, and on because the cover, David Pecker has been, it, Trump has g- given him uh, a, a, a bunch of inroads with the right. prince. Uh, yes. yes. Right. So Saudi Arabia pays the National Enquirer billions of dollars. They publish this freestanding special Saudi edition. Arabia. Vacation yes. in Saudi Arabia. MBS, the crown prince, the one behind the murder, Binsan, yeah. transforming the world at 32. And then, and then, of course, because the Washington Post has been so vocal about this heinous crime and murder, about which the Trump administration has been so fucking casual, they, I think, decide to go and get Jeff Bezos. Why? Because Bezos owns the Washington Post. And because and Bezos so, is a, a hundred, worth $138 billion, and Trump right. wants to be damaged. And Trump is and worth so Trump nothing. Is, yeah, Trump is a bankrupt and a crook. And Bezos has actually jealous. made some money. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And did Lauren Sanchez, who I like, and I'm sounding like I'm picking on her, I don't mean to, did she leak the dick pic in order to... Break well, up that's, his marriage. That's the thing. I mean, soap I, opera. I, I, you, is it? It's a, not un- unbelievable to think that that Trump said to Pecker, "I want dirt on Bezos, and I want right. you to, un- to to do this." But and the, in, in, mm-hmm. in exchange for that, we're going to give you. Uh, mm-hmm. You're going to get the magazine in the Saudi Arabian a- a- right. Empire, and you're going to have make all this billions it all of dollars. Makes sense. Yeah, but there is a neat twist in this. Yes, which is that the National Enquirer managed to sign an agreement. Uh, protecting them from prosecution in relation to the Mueller investigation, the, the right? Mueller, yes, and Trump's uh, obvious, you know, individual number one who committed these campaign finance violations, right? And the National Enquirer up to it in their necks, paying Trump's former mistresses to be quiet and right. c- catching kill, stories and things, right? They had to sign an agreement that. In res- return for getting immunity and not being prosecuted for all their crimes, they would not commit a crime for the next three years. Uh, Extraordinary to me that you have to you get an agreement where you say I won't commit crimes because uh, where is the criminality? Like, oh, does you a could, parking ticket you count? Could, There's so many questions. And this could well prove to be that's why Bezos has said it's extortion and blackmail. This could be a crime, and the Southern District of New York are all over this, and maybe Pecker's going to jail. Uh, along with, uh, let's hope, the whole fucking lot of them. He can run the prison newspaper. Ah, that'd be nice. <laughs> oh, Mueller, right. come through. In other news, tonight is the finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. All stars for who will take the crown. I know who I want. It's down to four, and I say this to anyone who has a favorite. Mm. Protect your heart, because mm. anything can happen, as we know uh, in all stars. Uh, Protect so, your heart. Trinity Vitek, Monet Exchange, Naomi Smalls, or Monique Hart. All good, all worthy. That's VH1 all tonight, 8 p.m. Hey, thanks for tuning in to The Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. James, can we make up on air so people I know, do I mind? Lo- well, no, I love when you two okay. spa. I, I love it. when you fought, but you know, that was hard. That hurt, but I'm, I'm going to get over it. <laughs> oh. let's, let, let's thumb it up. That's so nice. If you let, okay. me, if you let me win, I'll, I'll Listen like anytime on the serious. <laughs> Did you get a close app? up of the. Of the <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> where's, where's James? Oh, go ahead. Give me that, that eye roll again. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can watch this shenanigans on the Wow Report, worldofwonder.net. Uh, same time, same place next week, guys. Right? Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. Avocado.